Hey, what's going on guys? Panda here, and welcome back to another Creep Pasta narration video. In today's video, we're going to be doing another Pokemon 1. We are going to be doing the second part, Zombarion, and I was right, the Zombarion 2 is basically the other EV evolution uh, that was mentioned off in Zombarion 1. Uh, basically, if you're not quite sure on one about, go watch or go read uh, Zombarion 1 first, and then go uh, come back here for the second one, because you're going to need to understand like the first Zombarion to kind of understand uh, this one, I guess. Uh, so this one is made by a different person. It's made by a Jessica Kylie Nichols Vernon, aka Hull Sierra, which I'm guessing is a username. And I have, do apologise if I have uh, mispronounced that. Uh, but without further ado, like I said, it is to do with the ghost evolution of Eevee. And I suppose I'm just going to get straight into it. I read the creepypasta Zombarian and find myself rather intrigued by it. Being an elite hacker myself, and I use that term sarcastically as all I've really been good at is editing game files, hacking into anything of merit beyond that was simply not in my abilities. I thought it was just a scary story and nothing more, but when I looked into the beta ROM of the gold version and found myself face to face with the toxic stone that creates Zombarian, I wanted to be sure however, so I got an Eevee and made it faint to involve him to Zombarion. To my surprise, it worked and the creepypaster isn't actually stupid. What's the odds of that? Pretty fantastic and how unlikely it is, I must say. I loaded up the silver version ROM, hoping to see what the ghost type evolution was. When I used the all items code here, I checked my inventory for the toxic stone and didn't see one. Instead, there was a new item called Poke Infusia, with the description saying, only under dire circumstances. I tried using it on Eevee, only to get the message, you wouldn't think about doing this to your best friend. I tried to use the Poke Infusia when Eevee had fainted, and only to get the message, Eevee will be better soon, don't be so dramatic. I was rather stumped until, on a whim, I decided to go to Lavender Town's Pokemon Tower, as that was usually the number one place in Kanto one would go to find some ghost Pokemon. Now in Gold and Silver, the towers had already been converted to a radio tower, as most people would know, with the graves moved into the basement. I went to the basement with the goal of getting some kind of clue on how to use the Poke Infusia. This turned out to be the right move, as soon as I entered, I was stopped by Blue, Red's rival from the first game who spoke to me. I didn't have the option not to, he just walked right up in front of me and the dialogue box appeared. I see you have a Poke Infusia. I once had to use that stuff on my Raticate. I still visit him every once in a while and hoping to get a catch with him again, he said, followed by various ellipses before he spoke again. When a Pokemon has been damaged by a critical hit or an attack that is super affected, there is a small chance they'll be comatized. Once in that state, there is nothing you can do to them except passing them into the next world. It is said that there are Pokemon that can evolve into ghost types if you use it on them. No one knows which ones and which ones don't work. Heck, I don't know if any of them work but I sure hope Raticate is one of them. You don't think someone else caught my Raticate, do you? The only options listed were yes, no, and I don't believe in ghosts. Being a nice girl myself, I selected no, which got me the dialogue, Arceus, bless your heart. With that, he left. I found it strange that Arceus was referenced in a Gen 2 game when he's a Gen 4 Pokemon, but I was just glad to have that sort of hint on how ghost-type Eevee could have happened. After trying dozens of times to find wild fighting-type Pokemon to critically injure my Eevee, I failed to find any of that high enough level to even make it a flinch. In frustrations, I used the Poke Infusia on Eevee, practically screaming at my computer, Why don't you die? I yelled. To my surprise, there was a different result this time. Are you sure? This will kill Eevee? I hit yes and got another message saying, Eevee looked up to you, curiously, at you as you spray it with Poke Infusia. It begins to frown at you, afraid and not sure what it did to deserve this. Eevee fainted. Eevee fell into comatose. Eevee died. Eevee remained in my party, but not as a ghost Pokemon. Its health was at zero, with a maximum health of zero. It knew no moves, it had zero stats, and its type and listing was Corpse. Most shocking of all, the sprite for Eevee, which showed him slumped over his eyes closed. I tried taking Eevee to the Pokemon Center, only for Nurse Joy to tell me there was nothing that could be done for Eevee, but it has to be given a proper burial, and then to be asked if I ever heard of Lavender Town. I found this whole thing fascinating, if not a bit dark. Was this actually planned for Pokemon? It certainly builds up the whole Cubone's mother plot line for the first game and taught children how to deal with the loss of a loved one. Had I been some dumb little kid playing this through this though, having to buy a Poke Fusia and killing my comatose Pokemon? I didn't think I'd touch the series again without crying my eyes out, so I perfectly understood why this was removed from the final build of the game, though a lot of her feeling was lost on me, considering I had to kill the Eevee myself. I returned to the Pokemon Tower where I found Blue, who was overjoyed and had followed him the spirit of the floating animal skull. Blue jumped up and down and informed me that the ghost Pokemon are real, that he had just used Dusk Ball to catch his Raticate, which had rolled into a Gabriel. The game popped up, Gabriel Sprite, which was more of a humanoid looking Raticate, or rather the skeleton of one wearing a black robe and having wings. The Grim Reaper made sense as the name of Gabriel was the name of the Angel of Death. I'm so happy, I could just 
Wait, is that the Eevee in your hand? Your Pokemon died? You didn't seem so upset about this. I have Gabriel use up Dig to make the growth of your Eevee. The sprite of Gabriel flashed one more time, and the screen faded to black with a new grave appearing with the character standing before it. I talked to Blue with the message, why aren't you crying? I talked to Gabriel, and it played a sound clip of Rackray's cry backwards, displaying the words, you've done something awful, you'll soon pay the penalty for it. Blue spoke next, Gabriel's cry is pretty neat, my Pokédex says that Pokémon who are near death hear it as a normal words, call her. I'm so glad to have my friend back and know that he's kind of okay. At this point I was a little creeped out, but I didn't mind Gabriel's words, as I really just wanted to see the ghost Eevee. I tried interacting with the grave with my Eevee and got the message, you cackle madly anxious to find Spectreon and added him to the party. After walking around the graves for a while, expecting something to happen when nothing did, I got bored and left the room thinking that it was the beta version after all. Maybe this was as far as the event went. It seemed I spoke too soon as the second I got to the staircase, my Eevee appeared over his grave with a normal sprite and walked up to me, rejoined my party. You caught Spectreon, give the nickname to Spectreon the game asked, which I declined. Once I did, so I got the message, Spectreon used revenge, your Pokemons have clams shut, Clefable is suffocating, Lugia is immune. Slowbro is suffocating, Mariak is suffocating, all suffocating Pokemon have been ghost evolved. Before I displayed Spectreon Sprite, a floating white embryon like creature appeared with Miss Cloud's eyes, one red and one blue, below Spectreon's eyes. There are two purple teardrops around Spectreon. There are gaseous purple clouds around him, like ghastly. Blue walked up to me, Gabriel followed behind him, and he challenged me to a Pokemon battle, saying he wanted to see the clash of spirit Pokemon. The battle started. He sent out Gabriel, which was the only Pokemon he had left, and I spent out Spectreon. Much like Gabriel, Spectreon's cry was just like Eevee's, but backwards. I tried to use his moves, but once I hit attack, instead of displaying moves for him to choose from, I got the message, Spectreon doesn't take orders from killers. Blue went next and had Gabriel use an attack called Shadow Falls, which, once again, just like Arceus, was something that wasn't even introduced until Gen 4. The text displayed saying, it's super affected, Trainer Silver was slain. The battle ended with Blue saying, oh no no no, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean for this to happen. My screen went black. When it came back, I was playing a Spectrum, running through tall grass outside of Lavender Town until I noticed by a trainer who walked up to me as if to start a trainer battle and said, oh, a rare Spectrum. You might make quite a catch. The battle started and it seemed normal with Spectrum acting as the trainer, but what made me jump was the text saying, go human, a Pokeball was tossed and what came out was a, was a spirit of my trainer now acting as a Pokemon. I got my party, and there was the trainer in the top slot, with the others taken by other Pokemons. A Gengar with the same moves as my Clefable that suffocated, where at Merak was I had seen a red scowled creature that had, at first I thought was wearing a skull like Morak, but instead it was being with a head that had been skinned, leaving behind nothing but a purple skull with green fireballs for an iron small with splodges for blood, here and there. Instead of a bone, it carried a bone sword. That is a sword with a bone for a handle and a purple with transluted ghost blade. This creature was called Skull Savory. The Pikachu Ghost Evolution was Stranger. It had no eyes, it appeared to be wearing a Dracula cape coloured like a Zubat. In place of ears, it had two more Pikachu tails, though these were red. The mouth was the most normal thing about it, though. It had now had fangs. This Pikachu, now named Subachu, was purple and translucent. Finally, my Slowbro was the most morbid of all. The shoulder on its tail was now eaten the poor thing alive, the visible bone, but the Slowbro. Now blue instead of pink, didn't seem to notice this was happening to him. The name of the evolution was Slow Food, likely some sick of pun off of fast food. I went back to the game and saw my human had moves like Kick, Tackle, Throw Rock, and Shadow Ball. The opposing trainer just had a Rattata and a Parasect, which both went down pretty easily with the spamming of Kick. I won a battle, got money for winning, and then switched back to Spectreon with the new dialogue showing up. You know if there was one thing I was growing to hate, it's humans. I was caught once and had a wonderful loving trainer until one day he had learned that stupid legend about ghost evolutions. And even though I served him loyally, my mortal life was robbed from me and all in the name of the sick curiosity. Do you know what it's like to exist without having a body? To live when you devoid life. It is a constant torment, and now I shall inflect it with upon you humans. And any other Pokemon that stand against me, death shall consume this world. A text box showed up and asked me if I wanted to kill the trainer and his Pokemon. I hit no, but Spectrum said, Any control you had over this world was negated the second you, de you decreed that I should die and killed him anyway. The trainer stayed on the overworld, but now he had a coloured purple and every time I talked to him he just repeated the phrase and over and over again. I feel so cold, I want my flesh back, he would say as it played Ghastly's cry. This process however would repeat itself every time I won a trainer battle. After my 10th trainer battle, the radio stations began playing warnings about a ghost trainer that has been spotting offering people ghost Pokemons in exchange for flesh and attacking if they say no. 
and warning people to be on the lookout for any people acting oddly with the muscolored eyes. They could be possessed. I kept going, wondering how long I could keep this up, so I went from the town to town, killing the trainers and visiting the Pokemon Center. Every time I entered the Pokemon Center, Nurse Joy would beg me not to hurt anyone and give some sort of rant about how, even though I sub on trainer was a scumbag, that not all humans were like that. Sometimes they were even offered to help put Spectreon's soul to rest, but each time they offered, it would just make Spectreon's upset and given the same line. This isn't a world worth living anymore. And then the screen flashed as every NPC became ghost. Speaking of Nurse Joy when she was in this state may actually made me a little bit sad each time. I forgive you, Spectreon. I don't condone what you do to people, but I will fulfill my duty in death as I did too so in life. Do you need to hear them? If I said yes, Spectreon's party would just get healed as normal, followed by, we hope to never see you again. Eventually, as I reached my 30th dead trainer, the radio station kept talking about how Jota and Kanto's gym leaders are divided about how to address this problem. Kanto's gym leaders having to kill themselves to worship Spectreon like a god, while Jotaro's gym leaders insisted that they could only be standing against Spectreon and helping it back to rest as the world could be saved. I thought about visiting Kanto's gym leaders, and then when I did so, there were just ghosts who repeated Praise Lord Spectreon while giving me various TMs and other like potions and lemonades. It wasn't until I visited Blue when I was in for a surprise. He, unlike the others, wasn't a ghost and actually challenged me regretting his actions. Blue sent out Gabriel, but Gabriel refused to fight, so I went back to the overworld. Blue, I'm so sorry, I can't fight. Spectrum is right, the world's better off dead, Gabriel said facing Blue. I can understand you, but that means, but that means, Gabriel shadow falls. Blue died. Blue turned to face his rat after becoming a ghost, but didn't actually have anything to say. When I talked to him myself, he just said, if Gabriel thinks this is best, I won't argue with him. I feel so cold now. You at least spare my father, right? There was nothing else that could be done, so I left. Upon living the Virgin City gym, I got a phone call that said, bring my son, before hanging up. Assuming that was my mother, I had Lugia take us to Newbark Town, where I first entered my house and find the sprite of her hanging by the ceiling from a noose. This looked more humorous than scary on the Game Boy sprite, but it still had chills down my bones as a purple NPC appeared behind my Spectreon. Spectreon, you have to kill me the second you came here. You hate the living, so I took a drastic measure to earn your trust. All I want is my son. I know he's responsible for this, but he's still my little boy. He won't be a Pokemon trainer anymore. If I can have him back in my afterlife, I have unbelievable sway over Professor Realm. I can convince everyone to let this become a ghost world, if you would like. But just let me have my son back, the mother has said. My hands turned cold as the sheer magnificence of what would been placed on the table. My own mother has enough to influence literally everyone in the world to kill themselves. Jesus Christ. And just what has your mother done for you lately? Nothing quite on this level I'd expect. I was given a choice between yes or no. I pushed yes, thinking it would force me into no. But to my surprise, the trainer appeared right beside my mother, prompting to one more dialogue box. Thank you. I raised for him to be a little bit nicer to people. Master Spectrum. The game played pretty much normally after that, with me still in control of Spectrum, except every Pokemon I encountered was a ghost Pokemon with a purple transcendent spirit or a ghost evolution if they had one. Legendary seemed to be co completely immune and stayed alive. I could even earn gym badges and challenge the Elite Four. The only difference was that every NPC was not only a ghost, but seemed rather depressed as they reluctantly called me Master Spectrum. Since the Pokemon can hold Pokemon and Fusia like an item, I wonder what would happen if you traded one over to the gold version and used it as Zombarion. And what of Crystal? Does it contain any special EVs of the dead? Who knows, I don't, but it'd be a lot of fun to find out if anybody knows. Okay, so that was Spe uh, Zombarion 2, sorry, which is also known as Spectreon. Uh, I did like the little thing at the, the, the bottom where it said if um, if you were to trade it with, like, if you were to trade, like, a Pokemon holding the Pokefusia or a Toxic Stone across uh, across games, would it still work? Also about Pokemon Crystal. Because uh, that was something I definitely wanted myself. And, uh, yeah, this was actually, uh, like, I think as I say this all the time about it being a good creepypaster. Like, I am thinking about getting, like, making sure I do, like, notes so I can go over them, like, during these little outros and stuff. Uh, but that was, um, that was really good, like, I really like the idea of the sequel, like I said, I believe this was written by someone else who wasn't, like, I, I be like, I believe the, um, Zombarian 2 was written by someone who, who, who didn't write, uh, Zombarian 1, so, I, I did like it, the fact that it was definitely made by, um, I, I like the fact that it was definitely made by someone, but, uh, in terms of, like, realistically, like, I mean, there was the fact that realistically it couldn't be in the game because of the fact that it's a children's game, or the fact that it is played by a lot of children's, a uh, lot of children, so that doesn't make sense, but it's played by a lot of kids, and even, like, e even if it was, like, for some reason, like, a, an adult's game, like, it wouldn't make sense to have, like, these evolutions, because, um, it gives you kind of, like, a new plot to the game, and it's such a game-changer, like, once you're done with it, so, 
um yeah and the, like and the fact that it's also very different like like the fact that the um I would say Pokemon Silver is more extreme than Pokemon than Pokemon Gold with these EV evolutions that was supposed to be that was supposed to be um, supposed to be in the game, um, but yeah. So I wouldn't. So on the re on on the realistic scale, this is definitely unrealistic. The fact that like there's no way uh, Game Freak would have added this into the game. But other than that, that was a very good uh, creepy uh, creepy pasta. Uh, I did I did like the idea of the fact that he is a um, you know, sequel of Zombarion. Uh, I just find it very different. Like, I just find the two stories a little bit different, which makes it more fun to read. Uh, but the fact that uh, it makes the realistic skill go down. Uh, but then again, like, this is written by a different person, so realistically, maybe one could be right and one could be wrong. I mean, to be fair, Zombarion 2 could only be right if Zombarion 1 was true. Uh, but, like, they're, they're just two different. But, I don't know, maybe there's a chance Zombarion 1 could be true, but, like I said, on the realistic skill, it's all the way down there. Uh, but yeah, this is definitely uh, a, 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 a lot creepier. Uh, but there's not really much to say, I don't think. Like, I am definitely starting to think about at making sure I actually have notes when I do the creep past narrations, just so uh, I kind of know what to say. Because the problem is, I'm going to end the video and I'm going to, like, have a couple more points. Now we tend to forget stuff. I also do apologise if I had mispronounced anything during that. I do tend to mispronounce things quite a lot. Uh, but other than that, I'm just going to end the video. Thank you guys very much for watching. This is Zombarian 2. Uh, I try not to do the majority of the Pokemon ones, but there are a lot of Pokemon creepypastas, so I, I, when I'm looking for creepypastas, I do tend to bump into a lot of Pokemon ones. Uh, but anyway, like I said, it's me for now. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I hopefully see you all, all in the next video. Thank you very much, and goodbye.